Welcome to part three of three of the ASCO Residency webinar series. My name is Dr. Judy Tong, and I'm the Assistant Dean of Residencies at the Southern California College of Optometry at the Marshall B. Ketchum University. Today, I wear a different hat, and I'm going to serve and represent the ASCO uh, schools and colleges of optometry and their residency program. Today, I'll be talking about preparing for the residency match, ranking your programs. I welcome the newcomers and those that are returning back. To those that missed part one or part two, you're in luck. We will have the pre-recordings uploaded on the ASCO Residency website for you to peruse through at a later time. I will be covering three different, or five different areas, I should say. Number one, how does OR match and the ranking process work? What kind of strategies to ranking your choices uh, should be made? So I'll share some of those strategies. I'll also share uh, data from the OR match of the previous year about uh, the number of applications made, the number of people applied to residencies, and how many uh, programs you should rank. What happens if you change your mind? And I'll also talk about the post-match process and some of the new protocols that are coming down the pike. I want to revisit these dates, these important dates that Dr. Caroline Pate shared last week of the 2023 residency application OR match. The first is February 27th. This is a date that the OR match will open its site to applicants and programs, and they may begin to submit their rank order lists. The next one is March 17th. This is a very important date. This is a deadline where the applicants and the programs need to rank order their choices. And in between that time, the applicant and the program can modify their rank order as many times as they wish. And then on March 27th, we will all be notified about the match result. So you'll either be notified that you've been matched to a preferred site, a program, or that you, be, uh, have, you have not matched and need to proceed to the post-match process. How does OR match and the ranking process work? So they take a fancy statistical algorithm uh, and they match the applicant to the program. Now this is the steps they, pr um, they pursue. The applicants and the program submit their rank order lists by that March 17th date. The algorithm is applied to the rank order list for both the applicant and the program at the same time. Tentative match of the applicant is made to their preferred program by a traverse downward manner until all choices are exhausted. So basically, an applicant will rank order their choices and hopefully more than one, um, and the applicant will be tentatively placed to their first choice program. Now their first choice program also have them ranked. They will remain in that position until another applicant comes along and may supersede their position. If that's the case, the, the applicant that we're talking about may remain there if there's multiple positions, or they may have to be brought back and replaced to another program for consideration. We will see this in the video in more detail for clarification. The programs submit their rank order in the very similar manner, but their algor algorithm traverses upwards so that they can guarantee that they will secure um, their uh, most preferred choice. I've been asked which, uh, is it the applicant or the program have a uh, more likelihood or whoever has a more uh, an edge to the algorithm. If you look deep into it, deep dive into it, it's equal. So this is reassuring that the applicant will be given all the graces and opportunity to match to their preferred site. Let's run a match video demonstration as it's provided from the uh, OR match site. And hopefully this will clarify what I have just said about uh, the match. Let's run a match to see how our matching algorithm places applicants into positions. For this match, there are three programs with their rank or list shown above, and three applicants with their rank or list shown below. The algorithm starts with Carlos and tries to place him into his first choice Bayview. Since Bayview has ranked Carlos and has a position available, Carlos is tentatively matched to Bayview. Next, the algorithm tries to place Alicia into her first choice mountain. Since mountain has ranked Alicia and has a position available, Alicia is tentatively matched to mountain. We say that matches are tentative because an applicant who is matched to a program at one point in the process may later be removed from the program to make room for a different applicant that is more preferred. Let's see how that works. The algorithm tries to place Kevin into his first choice Bayview. Bayview only has one position and is currently filled by Carlos. However, the algorithm sees that Bayview prefers Kevin over Carlos. So the algorithm removes Carlos from the position and Kevin is tentatively matched into Bayview. 
Since Carlos has just been removed from a tentative match, the algorithm tries to rematch Carlos. Carlos's first choice is Bayview, but the position is filled by Kevin, who is more preferred than Carlos. Next, the algorithm tries to match Carlos into his second choice, Mountain. Since Mountain has ranked Carlos and has a position available, Carlos is tentatively matched to Mountain. The matching algorithm is now complete as each applicant's list has been processed and each applicant is tentatively matched to the most preferred choice possible. Tentative matches now become final. Hillside has no matches and is left with one unfilled position. You should note that with the matching algorithm, no applicant or program can be forced into a final match until all applicant rank order lists have been considered for the best possible tentative matches. Just remember, you will be matched to the most preferred program on your rank order list that ranks you and does not fill all of its available positions with applicants it prefers. Some of you may opt to proceed with a couples match. It is the same format, and I'll read this to you. For those that want to opt for the couples match, the couple match is not a separate match at all. It is the same. Two applicants who wish to be matched as a couple participate in the same matching process as applicants who are individuals. The key difference, as I noted there, is that applicants who participate as a couple link their rankings together to form pairs of program choices. The pair program choice is processed in rank order sequence by the algorithm, very similar to the single applicant. And the couple is matched to the most preferred pair of programs to which both partners uh, can match. By forming a program pair, the couple is saying that they only wish to match to that pair if both partners can be matched to the program. So in itself, the two partners or the two applicants, they will rank order their program choices in the exact same order. And it requires that the, the program rank each of their, um, the applicant's name. So it really is uh, done on the applicant's own merit. So there are chances where the program doesn't match, doesn't uh, rank one applicant's name versus the other. So it takes both sides to rank um, the programs in that order from the applicant standpoint and from a program standpoint, they need to have rank both of the applicant's name on there. So what are some of the strategies that I can share with you about ranking your choices? I have to say the first and foremost is give yourself ample time to think things through. Really give yourself time. Rank your choice in order of your true preference. I can't underscore this. Don't let, e let any outside noise convince you to do otherwise. Rank order your most preferred choice to your least preferred choice. Some of the things that, some of the factors that you should consider when you're ranking is this. Look at the residency core, uh, curriculum. I think that's the most important. Will you be just uh, providing direct patient care or will, be, will there be a, a mix of precepting externs or teaching opportunities in the lecture uh, segment or in being involved in teaching clinical skills? Is it important for you about the, the location of it, uh, whether it's um, on the West Coast, the East Coast, or the Midwest? Is it important to you whether you complete a residency program at the VA, the Indian Health Service, at a HMO, private practice, or at a school or college of optometry? Those are just a few things to consider, including um, other things like the resources that the facility may provide you uh, in terms of uh, types of instrumentation, the support staff, and also what the stipend um, is uh, with that particular residency program. So all those are factors that should weigh into your decision making. But again, don't listen to all the noise. Don't psych yourself out and say, okay, if I rank it this way, then I have a better chance of getting matched. Or maybe I should just rank one program. Well, listen, you're putting all your eggs in that one basket by ranking just one program, especially if that one program only has one position, then it, you really have made it very competitive. Um, and lastly, I don't think it's important to know how the program ranks you or how you may tell the program you're ranking because all those are in flux and it can change. No pressure should be um, undued upon the program and vice versa. The program should not put pressure on you to, to uh, rank them as well. So I wanna clarify some rules of engagement. I mentioned about uh, not exchanging uh, or telling the program how you're gonna rank or the program telling you how to rank. However, it is very appropriate that you as an applicant tell your program that you're very interested in their program, that you will be ranking them and that you would likely look forward to spending a year there. That's quite all right. 
And the program, likewise, can share the same sentiments and tell you that they will be ranking you and that you're a really good candidate. What you cannot do, and what the program cannot do as well, is tell each other how you're going to be ranking, first choice or high. That would be a, a violation of the rules of the OR match ranking. I'd like to share with you at this time some of the data that we've gotten from the OR match of the 2022 uh, match cycle. The first one is the registered applications or the applicants. We know that 582 applicants register for the OR match. Of that, 563 actually submitted a completed application. That means that they filled out the, the form completely on the OR match. They've requested all the letters of recommendations to be sent to the OR match. The MBO has sent your board scores. Your school has sent their transcripts. You submitted your letter of intent, and everything is ready to go. 527 of those uh, completed uh, applicants or applications went on to uh, participate in the match. And 55 of those applicants that completed their application withdrew or didn't rank uh, sometime during that residency cycle. So you can see that there's kind of like a, a flat line across the board. The second result is the match results. And as you see on the graph of the blue, it shows 386 applicants of the 527 match to one of their preferred sites. Of those, 141 applicants did not match, unfortunately. And this number also includes those that withdrew or did not uh, uh, participate in the rank ranking. The next information is the average number of applications that were made per applicant. So for those that matched to a program, they uh, submitted uh, 4.8 applications. So they submitted to roughly five residency programs versus 4.1 programs for those that did not match. So the graph suggests that the match applicants apply to slightly more programs. This is the average number of rankings. Again, the matched applicant um, submitted 3.4 uh, um, average on uh, 3.4 programs during their rank cycle, whereas compared to the people who didn't match, they only submitted 2.5 on the average of, of their rankings. So what does that say? It says that more of those people, the people who match, submitted more uh, programs on their rank order list. So my takeaway uh, or takeaway message or take home message number two says that the number of registrations and applications are kind of static. They're about the same. So we should expect the same level of competition. Number two, approximately 75% of applicants end up matching to one of their preferred program choices. So here on the flip side, you can see that 25% of the applicants don't match, unfortunately. Applicants that matched apply to slightly more programs, approximately five, so I encourage you to apply to multiple programs that you can see yourself being trained at and spending a full year learning from. And last, applicants that matched uh, ranked to slightly more programs, so they rank and said, I don't mind going to program one, two, three, four, and so forth and so on. So what happens if you change your mind? What if you have a change of heart first? So during the residency cycle, if you decide, no, I'm actually not going to pursue a residency because uh, I have personal health issues, my family has health issues, a really opportune job came my way, or I really need to get going and financially it's not going to be feasible, then it's appropriate to reach out to the program and let them know that you're going to pull your whole uh, residency application uh, out and that you're not going to be pursuing a residency and thank them for their time. Same thing, you should notify the OR match that you will not be pursuing a residency and you will not be ranking. However, if you reach to a certain point um, and you change your mind during the, the submission of the ranking, you can always go in if you still want to pursue a residency program you can always still go in, as I said earlier, you can go into the OR Match website and change your ordinals, your ranking. You can switch you know, your number one spot to your number two spot and vice versa. You can add a program that at one time you didn't consider, or maybe for one reason or another, you can delete a program from there. So you can do that before the match date of March 17th. Now, I can't underscore this. Do not rank, do not submit, anything to the OR match unless you are sure that you are going to fulfill and complete a year-long residency because there are violations that may occur if you decline after the match. You have to understand that there are other viable applicants that are pursuing the same residency program and wish to complete a residency program there. So if you submit it and you get matched, they get bumped somewhere else and it throws everything off. 
And potentially, you can also affect the program, leaving them high and dry without a residency, a resident or an applicant for that year, and so that they have to then participate in the post-match uh, process. So really, take heed and really do not rank or submit a ranking unless you're sure that you can fulfill that one year and to that particular uh, program. So stepping aside, what you need to say, I will accept any match of any other programs that I have uh, ranked, and then you can go forth and, and rank them. Otherwise, don't rank them at all. So here I said, if you rank, you get matched, and you decline the position, you will be in violation. And that violation will be reported to the respective president and the dean of the college and school, and also to all the directors of residency programs. And the violation, you may be barred from participating or applying to residencies for a period of um, um, three years and no more. So what is the post-match uh, process? And unfortunately, if you have to participate in the post-match process, it um, it is not a situation that you want to be in, but if you really want to do a residency, put the news aside that you didn't match and go full steam into the post-match process. So it starts immediately. Right after the announcement of the match is made on the 27th is the same time that the post-match process starts. And the OR match will do their due diligence and post the most current uh, available positions and programs on their website on that day, later on that day. And you can take a look, peruse through it, and determine if there are any viable programs that you are interested in. And from there, you proceed to contact the program, uh, program coordinator via email, via phone call, exchange information, and um, schedule for an interview. So on the sideline too, be ready. Be ready to send all necessary documents, including transcripts, board scores, letters of recommendation, as well as a letter of intent, and any other pertinent information that the program may request of you. Now, if you are um, um, not possessing of some of these documents, the OR match will reopen and will allow the registered applicant to retrieve that information and for that applicant to take that information and send it and forward it on to the designated program coordinator. So since there's a new match protocol, there is a little time on your side. And that time is a two-day grace period. That two-day grace period allows you to have a mental break, to recalibrate, and to investigate what programs are still out there that you wish to pursue. And it allows you to send all the information to the new programs. And for the programs, it allows them to decompress a little bit, to read up on your letter of intent, your CV, and um, everything that you submitted. And by March 29th, the um, post-match allows the program to offer the applicant a position and vice versa. It allows the applicants to accept the position. So there's a two-day grace period. Even though it seems fast, we know that the post-match is not as formal and it really goes at rapid speed. So hopefully that two-day grace period still gives you room to uh, put everything in order and make a wise choice. So I just want to complete today's presentation by reiterating what Dr. Caroline Pate had mentioned last week. She said, completing an optometric residency is an invaluable experience, providing an advanced clinical training under an experienced mentor. I like to add to that and say it will open up doors that you could have never imagined, and it will change the trajectory of your professional career forever. So my take home message number three is just do it. Best of luck to all of you, and let's proceed to go into the breakout rooms.